Hey everybody, my name is Brandon, and today I want to show you the absolute coolest way I have ever seen to deploy an Active Directory pen testing lab. We're going to be going over Game of Active Directory, which is a really large Active Directory environment that can be deployed with a script. It's very simple to install, it's very fast, and it takes all of the pain out of manually setting up a lab. So we're going to be setting up this main, the full GoAD or Game of Active Directory lab here. If we take a look at what this is going to include in this large image here, we see that just by installing this lab on our local machine, we're going to get this entire environment set up, which is going to consist of a uh, one domain here called sevenkingdoms.local. We're going to have a child domain of that. We're going to have a total separate forest over here with a bi-directional trust. We're going to have all sorts of users and groups set up with all different kinds of vulnerabilities. You can see over here, uh, in this domain, we're going to have ADCS set up. There are Microsoft SQL servers. There are, there are IIS servers with um, ASP uploads, right? All sorts of vulnerabilities already ready to go for us to exploit. So it's really cool. There are so many different things in here that you can use for Active Directory training, which is going to really mimic a lot of exploits that you're going to see in real environments. So if we scroll down here, there are also a few different options, right? Not everyone's going to have the hardware requirements uh, necessary to install this full lab. So there are smaller versions like this GoAD Lite, where it's only three virtual machines with a single forest and two domains, right? Uh, there's also a smaller mini lab, a full SCCM lab, and another challenge lab. So we're going to be going over the full lab install today. I actually have a Proxmox server in my home lab. What I'm going to do is set up just one really large virtual machine in Proxmox. We're going to install VirtualBox on it, and then we're going to install Game of Active Directory inside of VMs that are inside of another VM, right, on our Kali machine. So we're going to be doing some nested virtualization with it. This seems to be, at least in my opinion, the easiest way to do the install. I could be totally wrong, but it's been working for me. Uh, it was really fast and I'm happy with it. So uh, I wanna use this as a foundation to set up an Active Directory lab that we can practice all sorts of attacks against in future videos. So we're gonna be following the install with VirtualBox requirements here because we are actually going to be, you know, like I said, setting up VirtualBox within a separate virtual machine um, at least that's the way that I'm going to be setting up my lab. You can feel free to set it up however you want. I think that Game of Active Directory is a fantastic lab. There are tons of ways to deploy it. You don't have to follow these specific steps, but I did want to make a video showing how I do it. So I'm going to go over to Proxmox here. I have a physical server uh, actually in this closet behind me that is running Proxmox. I've created a virtual machine already and installed Kali on it. Now we're using Kali as a base operating system uh, just so we have a lot of those pen testing tools on there by default, makes things a lot easier. Now I've given this machine uh, 68 gigs of RAM. You don't need that much. I think the bare minimum you need for the full lab, it's either 24 or 32 gigs of RAM uh, and maybe somewhere between four and eight CPU. Uh, but it's really going to vary, you know, I mean, you can probably, you can, you can really play with it and see what you can get away with. Um, or you could just, you know, turn one or two of the machines off. There's five VMs in the lab. So if you know that you're not going to be practicing any attacks that are going to involve, you know, something in a certain forest, you can shut all the uh, VMs that correspond to that forest down. That way you're saving your system resources. So uh, again, I have 68 gigs of RAM here. I put 16 CPUs. Again, this is all overkill. I just didn't want to run into any slowness or issues while we are recording. Now, one thing I will say is that if you're doing it the way I am, where we are going to be running VirtualBox within a VM on Proxmox, you are going to make, have to ensure that you have nested virtualization enabled. And that's going to be true no matter which hypervisor you're using. If you're going to be following this VM within a VM uh, method that I am using to deploy stuff, whatever hypervisor you're using, if it's you know Proxmox or ESXi, you're going to need to make sure that you have nested virtualization enabled. Now with Proxmox, if you Google that, you'll find plenty of articles how to do it. There's some system settings. I believe it is enabled by default. Um, but the big thing here is that when you go in to create the virtual machine in Proxmox and you look at the processor, the processor type you're going to want to select is going to be host. This is what's going to enable that nested virtualization. All right, so I got that virtual machine set up. I've got Kali installed. Let's take a look at our remote session in here. Now I'm actually going to pull up the um, 
GitHub page for Game of Active Directory in here. If Firefox ever opens, there we go. So I do want to take a look because there's a lot of the uh, install steps in the GitHub repo. It makes things a lot easier. So let's just take a look at GitHub, go AD. Great. The install steps are really well documented. So if your installation is going to vary from the way that I'm doing it, uh, it, it's going to be really easy to follow just from the steps provided within this repository. But sometimes I think it's helpful to see somebody else go through it in case you run into any error messages uh, or things like that. You know what you should be seeing. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually install VirtualBox. In order to do that, we're just going to run sudo apt install VirtualBox. Now, I have already done that just so we don't have to sit around waiting for the install. So you can see it's already uh, running the newest version. Great. Now, if you've done what I've done and you just installed Kali from the ISO, VirtualBox is probably going to throw an error. So if I do a sudo service VirtualBox status, you're going to see it is failed to start. You're going to get this error message, right? Failed to start VirtualBox service, LSB, VirtualBox Linux kernel module. So VirtualBox is not working. Even though we have nested virtualization enabled, we're running into some issues. What we need to do is install the kernel modules needed by VirtualBox in order for it to function. So what we can do is if we run a uname dash R, that is going to get the kernel release of the Linux kernel we are currently running. We need to install the corresponding Linux headers for the kernel release that we're running. All that entails is running sudo apt install Linux, if I can type here, dash headers, dash, and then if we hit tab uh, once or twice, you're gonna get all these auto completion options. We need the one that exactly matches the kernel release that we are running. So I'm gonna copy and paste that and hit enter. And that's gonna run through that install. This shouldn't take very long and hopefully once this is installed, we should be able to actually restart VirtualBox and it should be running. But if you don't install these Linux, uh, these Linux headers, VirtualBox is not gonna start. You're not gonna be able to run the lab. You're gonna have a bad time. All right, now that that has finished, all we need to do is restart the VirtualBox service. So let's do a sudo service VirtualBox and restart. All right, now if we check the status of VirtualBox with sudo, uh, sudo service VirtualBox status, it is running. Great, so all we were missing were those Linux headers. And we can confirm this by just going and opening up VirtualBox and it should run. Cool, we got VirtualBox installed, that's step one. Great, now the next requirement that we're going to need is Vagrant. This is really easy to install with Kali, all you do is sudo apt install Vagrant. Uh, and then we're going to do a dash Y so we don't get prompted for that yes or no prompt. I already have it installed, so we don't have to sit around and wait. We can confirm that we have it running if we just do a Vagrant version. Install. This is the current version that I'm running Vagrant with. This is currently supported by Game of Active Directory. Uh, so, and this is as of the, you know, the date of recording, this is what is in the Kali repository for Vagrant. So, it's all working. We're all good there. The next thing that we're going to need to install is Docker. We're gonna be using the Docker installation method for Game of Active Directory. I find that to be the cleanest and easiest method of installation. I would highly recommend going that route instead of installing Ansible and all the pip packages and all of that manually. So what we're going to do is a sudo apt install docker.io dash y. That is going to install Docker for us. And again, I've come prepared. I've already installed it. We are good to go there. Let's take a look back at the documentation. All right, so we've installed VirtualBox. We've installed Vagrant. We've also installed Docker. We need to install this Vagrant-Reload plugin. All right, we can do that by typing in Vagrant uh, plugin Vagrant plugin install, and then paste in our Vagrant dash reload. And that should be installing the Vagrant reload plugin that is needed for the installation. So while that, oh, perfect, that didn't take too long. Good, so we're good. Now we have some options here. We've, we've covered all the prerequisites for the providing section. Now we're not gonna be provisioning with Python. Um, we're actually just going to be provisioning with Docker. 
So we should not need to install all of these other dependencies here. We are just going to need to uh, install Docker, which we have already done. So what we can do now is we need to actually clone this repository. So we need to get all of this code onto our system. I'm gonna click here on code and copy this URL. I am going to go back to my terminal here and let's do a git clone and paste in the URL. Great, so now if I do an ls here, we have this goad directory where we just clone the repository. So if we cd into that and do an ls-la in here, this is all the code that we're going to need to deploy the lab. So they come with a, a very handy install script in here. So we don't really even have to know how Vagrant works or how Ansible works or any of this stuff, right? It's very simple to deploy. The creators of GoAD have done a fantastic job of making this a very streamlined process. So all we need to do is run this GoAD script. And this is not even just some hack together bash script. It has all of the command line usage and all sorts of things coded in here so we can figure out how to use it. Now that what we need to actually do to start is we're gonna run the check command. So I believe this is even in the documentation. Let's take a look. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna run this right here, but not with local, right? The M is gonna be the mode flag. I believe is what it stands for, for the provisioning mode. We are going to be provisioning with Docker. So we can check our dependencies by copying this command. And let's see, let's paste it in here. We're gonna run the go ID check command. Uh, the lab, we're going to be doing the full GoAD. Now, if you don't have the system resources to do the full lab, that's totally cool. You can replace this GoAD with some of the other options here, uh, like we saw, like, uh, where is it? Oh, right here. Like GoAD-Lite, right? Or SCCM or Mini Lab, right? If you want to deploy a different lab. I'm going to be deploying the full one and using that for some future videos. Uh, but right now, this is uh, what we're going to run. So if we run this, it's gonna run all sorts of checks to make sure that we have the appropriate dependencies installed. And since we're using Docker, it's going to make the install process much easier. We don't really have to mess around with stuff. All we have to do, like we have just done, is install VirtualBox, install Vagrant, and then uh, install Docker. So it says check is okay, you can start the installation. Now, it's something important to note, it is going to make sure that we have more than 120 gigabytes of free space on our disk. There's a lot of disk space necessary. We're gonna be installing five Windows virtual machines, pulling the Vagrant images from them. That is no small task. So it's important to know, you know, and think if you start adding snapshots onto this, or you start, you know, doing things that are going to add more storage uh, or more requirements for storage, build that into your lab, into your host VM. So I created this Kali virtual machine with 250 gigs of storage just to be safe. It's also going to check that we have more than 24 gigs of RAM. So I think 24 gigs is probably the minimum. It never hurts to have more, especially with Windows machines. They're gonna eat up that RAM. Uh, or our Kali machine too. I mean, running all the tools that we're gonna be doing, that's gonna eat up RAM. So um, there you go. I mean, it never hurts to have more, but work with what you have. Now to actually install GoAD and get the lab running, what we're going to do, let's take a look back at the install instructions. So we've already installed the dependencies, we're good. Um, now all we should have to do is run this install command, which is using this goad wrapper script, which is a big wrapper around using Vagrant and Ansible. It's going to do a lot of the stuff for us. All we're gonna do is paste in this command, right? Run the goad sh script with the task of install, the lab of goad, the provider is VirtualBox, and the mode is Docker, the method. We'll run that command. Now this is gonna take a while. Uh, let's see, Vagrant has failed. All right, so even though we are using the Docker installation method, we actually need to go back and we missed the dependency, I'm sorry. Let's go back, take, take a step back here. We need to actually install these Ruby gems ourselves. So let's clear this, this mess, sorry that I had missed that. Let's do sudo and then paste in this gem install command and hopefully that should be good. I would have thought that would be caught by the uh, dependency script or the check script, but I guess not. Um, now let's try running the install script. Let's take a look here. Now this, this will take quite a while, like a few hours probably. So now that we have installed the gem dependencies as well, uh, we should be good to go. This is gonna pull down all the Vagrant images 
for the Windows machines, then it's going to provision them, which is going to involve a ton of steps. It's going to be creating users, creating the actual domains, uh, so on and so forth. All those attack paths that we saw. So this is something you should probably run overnight if you can, uh, or else like go out and get some lunch. Uh, and then still wait some more because it's going to take a while. And that's no fault of the lab creator, right? I mean, you're going to be downloading some massive files. Like these Windows Server Vagrant images are massive. And then it takes a long time to get them provisioned. So sit back and wait and just be excited for the lab you are about to have. All right, so I've just jumped to a separate Kali virtual machine where I already have gone through the GoAD installation process. I just want to cut out all of that waiting time. So I came prepared. Now, in order to get the lab started, now, if you just ran through the install, the lab should be started by default. But if you shut your machine down, all those VMs are going to stop and we're going to need to start them again. So again, if you have just finished the install, you don't need to do this step. But if you've shut that VM off, you're going to need to do this every time you start that VM back up. And that is going to be running this GoAD script uh, with the type uh, or the task, I'm sorry, of start the provider as VirtualBox, the lab, oh, let's make sure we spell that correctly, the L flag or lab as GoAD, and the, uh, I don't even think this matters, but uh, we'll make sure we put the M flag of Docker in there. This is going to go and actually start all those virtual machines up that we had already created. So if I go ahead and look at VirtualBox, you can probably see these start to come to life here. Let's see. Yeah, so I already have all these VMs built and it's gonna go through the process of starting them up. Now, this process can also take a little while. It doesn't take that long. You know, you're not gonna be waiting like you did for the install, but it will certainly take a few minutes. So let me cut to when this finishes. All right, so those virtual machines have now spun back up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reference the lab architecture diagram here for GoID. And if we take a look, you know, now we should be able to hit these machines, which all seem to fall on this 192.168.56.0 slash 24 subnet. So I'm just going to pick one. Let's pick DC01 for King's Landing. Uh, this is 192.168.56.10. Now, since we've installed these virtual machines uh, within VirtualBox on our Kali machine, we should just be able to hit them directly with no special requirements needed. So I'm just going to do an nmap of 192.168.56.10, which is that DC01. And we should get the results back of that being a domain controller. Yeah, so this looks just like a Windows domain controller. We can tell already. And it also says nmap report for seven kingdoms local. Actually, I think this is probably because I added a host entry. So you might not see that part. Uh, but what you will see is, you know, these common Windows domain controller ports like port 88, uh, you know, 135, 445, whatever. So we know that that is going to be the virtual machine that we're hitting and not just some IoT device on my home network. All right, and that's all I got for you today. That was the install process of GoAD. Again, your install process might be a bit different depending on how you choose to deploy it, but I wanted to make sure that I had a video out for a baseline install because I do plan on making a ton of Active Directory attack videos in the future, uh, and I wanted to use GoAD as the basis for that. So this is the lab that I'm going to be working out of as I teach you all some Active Directory attacking techniques. And I do want to say a huge, huge shout out to the creators of Game of Active Directory. This is just such a fantastic lab. And Mayfly here also has a blog walking through all of the attacks. So if you don't want to listen to me yap on and on and show you stuff, you can go read Mayfly's blog here. Uh, which tells you how to do all the installs, walks you through a ton of the attacks, so on and so forth. I'll put a link to Mayfly's blog in the description of this video as well. In case you can't wait for me to release the videos, go read Mayfly's blog and learn some of these Active Directory attack techniques. Thank you for watching. I hope you've gotten some value out of this video, and I'll see you next time.